Hello, welcome to Big Ben's Movie Show. Again, I'm your host, Big Ben. Thanks for coming back. This week, my guest is Tom Lando. How you doing, Tom? Pretty good. Thanks good. for having me. Good, good. Uh, so this week, uh, the movie that we're going to be that we watched and that we're going to be talking about, uh, there's only one this week. It was kind of a slow week for movies, uh, and the movie was Krampus. Uh, yeah, the story of the evil Santa Claus. When you're when you're naughty, you get Krampus. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the, the trailer, and then we'll talk about the movie. It's the most wonderful time of the year With the kids jingle bells Merry Christmas! Looks like Martha Stewart threw up in here. This is delicious, honey. It's a little dry. Well, mine's delicious. Mine's dry. Do you want to trade? It's, the it's Christmas. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Look at <laughs> With those holiday greetings and greetings. How are we gonna survive Christmas with 12 people stuck in a house with no heat and no electricity? Or food. There's plenty of leftovers, Howard. Beer it is. It's the weirdest thing. There's no cars, no people. How long can this keep up? I heard something on the roof. What the hell is this? Saint Nicholas is not coming this year. Instead, a much darker ancient spirit. Those are hooves. Elk or a goat? What kind of goat walks on its hind legs? His name is Krampus. He and his helpers did not come to give, but to take. Everybody, hold on to each other. He is the shadow of Saint Nicholas. Christmas. Nothing bad's gonna happen on Christmas. Oh, scary. So I I took the, I made the mistake of taking my nine year old daughter to see this. <laughs> uh, I went with I went with my mother and my wife and my nine year old daughter. To be fair, I checked online. It was rated PG thirteen, and the parents, whatever for movies, said that an eleven year old could handle it. And I'm like. My daughter's a gamer. She's, I mean, she's <laughs> hardcore. She can handle an 11 year old. She's fine. She cried so much through the whole movie. I felt like the worst parent in the world. And I could hear, like, in my head, like the people behind me, who brought a child to see this? And it was me. Oh, she's stronger so, for it. Now, yeah, you know. that's, that's my hope. <laughs> so, what did you think of Krampus? Um, I think if this is the only movie you're doing, it was a slow week for real. Um, <laughs> this movie had no idea what it was trying to do at all. Like a little bit, yeah, a little bit of scatterbrained. Some comedy, some horror, some family drama, some like in the ending. One guy got up and left the theater at the ending. Uh, one guy uh, out loud said, "What? <laughs> what a cop out!" And then walked out of the theater before we got to the switcheroo of it all. The super, the super cop out. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was like uh, one cop out, second cop out, third cop. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. There was there was a. Shyamalanian 
a bunch of twists there in the end. Or something, yeah. Or something, yeah. Although that, to me, was the, the thing that I noticed was it's not really clear how that ended. No, we, we don't know. Are, we could be inside of a giant snow globe right now. We, we, are we all inside of a snow globe? Or did, is everything okay and this is just a window into their life? Or what? You don't know how snow globes work. So the snow globe is important. It ends up showing up at the end. So there you go. Yeah, the movie was funnier than I expected, although yeah. with the cast... Uh, David Ketcher and Adam Scott, uh, I, I assumed there would be some comedy going on. Yeah. They're comedy people, they're comedy actors. Uh, but it was it was funnier than I expected. I, I have heard that this was trying to go for dark comedy, that that was, that was the thing they were trying to reach for. And they did kind of nail that. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of right in the wheelhouse of what it does. Yeah, they did a really good job with all the Christmas music in the movie. Yeah. That, that really, every Christmas song they play is completely sarcastic to what's going on in yeah. the movie. So the, the, each one is not just music in the background, it's a statement. I think they did a really good job with that. I noticed that the director was a first time director, yeah. and it, you can just tell like every, wrote it. Yeah, yeah. every single thing in there is like an homage to some other movie. You got yes. the George Romero thing in the beginning, all the way through the Polar Express at the end, you know? Yeah. I gotta say too, like a lot of the creatures were very detailed and, had, uh, and, and looked great and had and lots of detail and you could see their faces. And then you got to the actual Krampus, and it seemed to just be a lone mask that didn't do... Yeah, it was just a rubber Halloween mask. It of, was a rubber... Ha- yeah. And that's all it, it did. Yeah. It was just an old man. And that's all it did. He, wouldn't, he didn't speak, he didn't move, he didn't... And don't get me wrong, it was pretty scary. But again, I'm scared of old people. So that's, that's my thing. There was an interesting part in this movie, kind of towards the beginning, where they're grumpy because they have to spend time with family. And Adam Scott sits the sundown and says, well, but that's what family is. They're the people you don't like that you have to spend time with. And I gotta say, like after I met their family, I was like, I don't think you have to spend time no, with those I people. Think you can just tell him to go, caution to go to his brother's house Absolutely. if he wanted to. Anyhow, yeah, he apparently wanted to go to his brother's house. They have somewhere else to go, or just don't hang out with them. Yeah, it's apparently there's some kind of rule that you have to hang out with your family no matter how terrible they are. If they're mean to you, skip it. Don't hang out with them. It's fine. Do not hang out with those if people. If your family sucks, leave them be. <laughs> don't don't bother them. The other thing that was interesting, too, was the, uh, the grandma. We talked about this briefly yeah. uh, before the show started. The grandma is speaking German through the first couple of bits of the movie. Also is subtitled, which I loved. I thought that was great. Yeah. Even though the kid responded in a way that made it clear that he understood and he responds in English, the grandma speaks in subtitles because she speaks German. Yeah. And then suddenly the subtitles disappear. And then suddenly she's speaking English. And you're like, what? what? <laughs> like Almost like at certain yeah. points in the script, they were like, yeah, this is where she speaks German. And then... Uh, blah, blah, blah. It's like, wait, didn't you change it? I don't know. Just keep it. Go with it. We want them to watch the flashback, so she has to be in... I don't, yeah. It yeah. Was. And her little flashback, that was actually some really good animation. Yeah. I, liked that. I didn't expect it at all. It reminded like. me of the uh, the Deathly Hollows from Harry Potter, where the, the kind of the the animation of it all was really nice. It reminded me of uh, Pulp Fiction. Not Pulp okay. Fiction. Uh, Kill Bill, right? Where they're <laughs> yes. in the middle of killing a bunch of people and then, pause, cartoon. Yeah. All right. A little cartoon. Carry on. A little cartoon while we uh, talk about killing other people. All in all, though, I would probably say give this movie a pass. What do you think? I think you give the movie a pass now, and then you aren't surprised when, like, in 10 years, it's a cult film, and people probably. are watching it midnight Christmas. Yeah. yeah. No, this this will be on Netflix in, like, three months. Uh, so you can, you can run out to the theaters and, and spend your money, or just wait for Star Wars. <laughs> uh, you should probably just wait for Star Wars. Uh, and then, but, if you'd like to, you know, yeah. get through the line. and um, Go see it if you're looking for something funny, if you're looking for something scary. Uh, it's, don't it's take your children. Big, and don't take your kids. Uh, even though they're, don't, I mean, believe it, there is no blood, there is no gore. So good for kids on that, but it will scare the crap out of it them. It will. Um, yeah, it was, it was bad. It was, it was really scary. They did a good job of dread, but yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, so that, that is our movie review for the week. Now we're going to take a moment and learn a little bit about our co host here. We're going to talk about his classics. Tom, for your classics, the, the, you picked four of them, and, it's, and these are four great movies. And the first one we're going to go with is Spaceballs, which I, <laughs> I don't know how much more classic you can get than friggin' Spaceballs. That is, uh, that is one of the most quoted, most wonderful, funniest, best movies of all time. It's, it's absolutely one of my favorites. What do you like about Spaceballs? Um, I mean, this is the movie that kind of introduced me to... The joys of being as ridiculous as possible. I mean, it's Mel Brooks, <laughs> and it's really the best yes. Mel Brooks movie. It, yeah, it, it is. Um, every time you watch it, something else pops up that makes you laugh. Like I 
didn't get that before. It's yes. Like, I watched it as a kid and I laughed at a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. And then you go back and watch it as like a you know, middle schooler and you're like, oh, oh, there were so many naughty bits that I didn't know about. <laughs> and then you go back and watch it as an adult and you're like, there were even more naughty bits <laughs> exactly. that I didn't get the first time. And they're so great. It's, it's such a funny movie. Uh, plus, too, as you get older, you start to get all the references to other stuff. Yeah. Exactly. I, I gotta say, and it, well, the first couple times I watched it, I didn't know why they were screaming at the Statue of Liberty at the end because I hadn't seen <laughs> Planet, Planet of the Apes. Yeah, yeah. And then you go see Planet of the Apes, and then you come back, and, and it's like, even oh, funnier yes. now. But I will um, say, it's, I watched I watch it once a year, so um, it kind of it's kind of dated now. Mister, the, yeah. the the VHS reference, it kills yeah. me. I'm like, oh, it's the future, guys. Yeah. Come on. I do like that. It's like in the future, they still have VHS. Oh yeah. Uh, but I but I love that though, where they rewind and it's like. It's like, we just missed it. It's when? Like, where now? were we? When? Then? No, now. But when? You just missed it. <laughs> this movie is just full of all these wonderful little nuggets that just make it such a great, great movie. Um, you could maybe, if you wanted to do a Star Wars marathon, you could skip episodes one through three, watch Spaceballs instead. Watch four through six. Wow, that then would watch really Spaceballs, make the whole thing better. Then watch seven. That would really make the whole thing. Please, everybody at home, do that. <laughs> skip the first three. Maybe watch the third one, but the skip definitely skip the first one. Uh, yeah, just and replace the first one. Even replace the first one with spaceballs, balls. and then go from there, and you'll be much less pissed uh, by the time you get to episode four. There's so, no Jar Jar in spaceballs. There balls. is no Jar Jar. It, <laughs> okay, so my wife found this video this week that points out that Jar Jar might be the greatest Sith master. I love in the it. I love this theory. Have you heard this theory. I'm terrorizing all of my nerd friends with it because it, oh, if only that were true. It's, I mean, you read it though, and it's a reach. It they is. are reaching so much. Like, see there where he didn't listen to Qui Gon? That's him undermining the Jedi. Come <laughs> on, it's not. It's so far from anything like that. Uh, and but, it explains why he survived. It does. It explains like, why he, he survived. should not have survived any of that movie. It compares him to Yoda because they both talk funny, and they're like, "Look, it's a character that talks funny. That <laughs> means the funnier he talks, the more powerful he becomes." Uh, just it's, that's my power too. The funnier I, the, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, all right. Funnier talk you do, the more powerful you become. You do. Exactly. Yes. Um, okay. All right. Next movie in the classics you had was Heat. Okay. This is not The Heat with Sandra Bullock no. and Melissa McCarthy, but that movie is hilarious. That's a great. It's a funny movie. But that that is Al Pacino. <laughs> that is Al Pacino. Hua! That's. I mean, that is. So this and Heat is in the movie when Pacino went full Pacino and is the Pacino that we now know. Because at one point, Al Pacino could talk like a normal human being, boys and girls. Uh, and then suddenly something happened in Heat and Sent to the Woman. I think that those two really... Yeah. And he was like, I don't have to talk like that ever again! hoo and just And then it never stopped. Oh, he I went full it. Pacino in every single movie after <laughs> that. Including Jack and Jill, where he sells Dunkachinos because he's Al Pacino. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. So but this can... movie is great. So it's, it's Al Pacino, it's Robert De Niro... Uh, and it's Val Kilmer. It's Val Kilmer, and you know Val Kilmer doesn't get top billing, but he really he makes movies in a lot of ways. He he's makes he's just great. Yeah. really good. Um, and oh, what's the guy's name? It's not Michael Madsen. It's the guy I always mistake for Michael Madsen. I'll have to come back to that. Uh, yeah, the director, Michael Madsen. No, no. Uh, one of the other rubbers. He's a oh, okay. big guy, bald. He's in everything. Um, thank you. It's not Roberto Benigni. No. <laughs> <laughs> but man, that would make the movie. <laughs> Roberto Benigni from Life is Beautiful. No, yes. no, I don't think that was him. No, that's. But yeah, no, he Anyhow. is an amazing movie. Yeah. And I believe it was the first movie where Pacino, Pacino and De Niro, De Niro were on screen at the same yeah, time, exactly. having scenes with each other. And the scenes that the two of them good. have yeah. are the, great. The diner scene yeah. is just, it's really powerful. It is. It's great stuff. It's great stuff. And then, of course, years later, they did. Uh, that movie where they were both cops and uh, they were righteous. It was a righteous kill. Was that the one? Something like that. Yeah, uh, and that that was. Eh. But this was the good one. Yeah. Go, definitely go watch it if you haven't seen it. Uh, it number is. number three on your list, Clue. This is another classic. This is wonderful. Uh, this is there's a, there's a meme going around on Facebook that says you can tell a lot about a person by where they know Tim Curry from, uh, and Clue is one and of the most this popular is it. answers. Yeah. yeah, this is. This is a great one, um, and it's it's such a great movie. It really, when you look at the fact that it is, I mean, it's it's a movie based on a board game years before Battleship. <laughs> you, <know. laughs> you had to mention that. <coughs> oh my goodness! Little fairies years, lost the swings and died. Years before mm. all these other uh, the movies came out that were that are awful. Um, this was a good one, and it they took the premise of the movie, but they didn't 
they didn't go hardcore with the premise of the movie. They just let it, they let the premise of the game become the premise of the movie. Yeah. And then exactly. separated themselves from that. So that there, you didn't have to do all the guessing. Yeah. You didn't have to roll doubles. Though, so I mean, to get room to room. The movie is famous for, they did have film with three different endings and yes. released each ending in a different theater. And a lot of people blame that on why it was such a terrible flop in the theaters. Uh, yeah, and it's, although, I, to me, I've never saw it in the theaters. I, the first time I saw it, I believe it was on a Saturday on Comedy Central uh, when it was just a rerun. Yeah. And you see all three endings yeah, in, in a, a row. row. And it, you it gets, love it. That's great, yeah. It's so wonderful that it's, uh, that was such a great idea to do that. Yeah. Because uh, there's, there's an ending for everybody. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, this is a great movie, great cast. Uh, Michael McKean. Madeline Kahn. Uh, Madeline yeah. Kahn. Uh, Martin Mull. Um, um, Doc this. Brown. Doc, uh, oh yeah, Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> Thank you. Great stuff. That's his real name stuff. too. Yes. All right. Yes, that's his real name, <laughs> Doc Brown. Uh, better than naming him as his role from Taxi. So, uh, but yeah, that's that's Clue. That is a great, great movie. Uh, next one on the list. Last one, The Sting. Or I, the, sting. the Sting. Yeah, yeah. It is The Sting. It is The Sting. It's not The, the Wrestler. No, no, it's not Sting. There is no Scorpion Deathlock in this movie. Uh, this is Paul Newman, Robert Redford, and it is the classic. Heist story, yeah, it's the, the classic. Maybe Con the Man original movie. heist flick, really. Yeah, um, yeah, no, it's 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 the best one, and always known for the score, you know, with the the entertainer. Yeah, it's a great song, and it'll get stuck in your head forever, um, and a great great movie. Stick around after the show; we're actually going to be showing The Sting, um, which an American movie classic. Sit around and watch that, uh, become a little bit smarter and a little bit better person. So there you go. But yeah, that's that's such a great movie. I, I think my dad made me watch that the first time I saw it. Yeah, same here. My mom said, oh, we're going to watch this one. Yeah. This has no lasers in it. What, am, what are you doing to me? <laughs> there are no lasers. There are no cream pies. Yeah. There's no, yeah, there's no nothing modern, nothing silly about it. But it just works really, really well. It's it's such a great movie. Um, great story, too. And, and not, like a lot of old movies are really easy to follow because everything was simple because... Yeah. No one had ever thought of it before. Yeah. This isn't that movie. This no, is this, actually there's quite a lot going on in this film. I mean, yeah. keep keep your head on because it's you can't sleep on this. It will it will confuse you. So, all right. So, new rules here for suck not suck. We've decided for this week. Um, I am going to read a headline uh, that has recently come out about a movie, and Tom. Knowing only just the headline will have to tell me whether or not that sucks. Whether or not it's going to suck. Okay, right. here we go. All right. All right, number one. Jason Priestley is going to direct Phil Hartman's biopic. Jason Priestley directing, is that going to suck? No, no. Phil Hartman's biopic is going to be amazing. I'm going to be an optimist. Um, I don't care you. who's directing it. Good for you. I think they can make a good That's, film out of it. I would hope for that, too, that yeah. the Phil Hartman of it all would make the movie rise. Yeah. And to the point where Jason Priestley gets an amazing job offer. Has after he done it. directing before? I, I should have looked this up. And I, didn't. I don't know. But I yeah. don't think he has. I mean, it's, uh, he's, I think he's, done, he's obviously directed something, because it's not like they're going to hand it to just anybody. Um, so I think he's probably directed some TV shows. But no, hasn't done anything major. I mean, this would be... Uh, I, I believe a major thing. The guy they've cast as Phil Hartman is another guy who's known for voice acting. Interesting. Uh, he That's actually cool. looks a lot like Phil Hartman too. All right. So it's it looks okay. It looks it looks interesting. I'm I'm into it. Uh, I'm also going to say not suck out of hope. Good. All right. And speaking of first time directors, can I? Um, so the guy who did Krampus was a first time director. Will he ever get another job? Yes. Okay. Because he wrote it. Okay. It's, I, the thing that I've noticed in Hollywood is if you're willing to write, direct, produce, and do all the stuff yourself, there's always work. All right. <laughs> there's, there's always work if you're hiring you. Uh, so, yeah, no, it's, uh, that's, that's something that I think he will get work. Plus, you can see the people that he made it with are his friends. Yeah, that's fair. They're going right. to show up for another, yeah. Right. Uh, they're going to show up for something else. Um, all right, next piece of Suck Not Suck news. The director for the new Friday the 13th movie has left the project. Not because of creative differences, just because it was taking too long, he said. Will that movie suck? That movie's going to suck. Yeah. Yeah, it will. That movie's going to suck. That's not a good reason. We've, we've now crossed the creative differences barrier when uh, Edgar Wright left Ant-Man, and everyone's like, I don't know. Yeah. And it still ended up working out okay. Now, there's a caveat where if he left because one of his family members mysteriously died in their sleep, I'm back on board. That I wasn't know it, yeah. It's just taking forever. Yeah. It's taking forever for them to get the rights, to get them, uh, everything all yeah. together. And when a movie just takes too long, 
development hell, as it's called, never a good sign. Yeah. Usually, probably won't even get made. So, yeah. Uh, all right, next one up. Sofia Coppola, great director, has bailed on the new live-action Little Mermaid. Okay. First off, they're making a live-action Little Mermaid. I'm just listening to the story. Apparently, they're making a live-action, like everything. everything. Jungle Book live-action. Jungle Book live-action, which them. actually looks interesting. Although the Disney version looked good, the Universal version. Yeah. Um, I mean. They just made uh, Cinderella. Yeah. Uh, they're making Beauty and the Beast with Hermione Granger. She's going to be Beauty and the Beast. I love that everyone says this. Her name was not Hermione Granger. Sure is. Her name was Doc Brown. <laughs> <laughs> it should um, be. But Sofia Coppola bails. So this is, I mean, the fact that they got Sofia Coppola for that to begin with is interesting. It's, it's cool. kind of a cool yeah. get, and then it almost makes sense that it's like, but of course she'd bail on that. Like everything about that 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 sentence says suck. Why should would she even do a live action yeah. Little Mermaid movie? Yeah. Yeah. No, that seems like a silly idea. She op- she she promised to do it for a friend who finally let her off the hook. You know. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, John Favreau is doing live action Jungle Book. Maybe. And John Favreau's. Are, they, are they all having grandkids now? I, I don't know. I don't know. I think John Favreau likes money. Well, they're so that's, that. <laughs> that's why. Not um, like us. Yeah, live action Little Mermaid, probably going to suck. Going to suck. Uh, I don't know who you're going to get directed, and I don't think it matters. Um, all right, next one up The Revenant. Uh, it's a new movie coming out in January starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Tom Hardy, um, directed by that man right there who won an Oscar for Birdman. Oh, wow. Um, and all won right. a whole bunch of stuff for Birdman. He's great. Uh, so he's directing it. The director has now promised there is no bear rape in the movie. So first we got to clarify: is that so, the rape okay. of a bear or by that a bear? Is, that is rape by a bear okay. of Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Apparently, somehow there was a rumor got spread that at two points in the movie, not just once but twice, because <laughs> once a, you're just drunk. The one, second yeah, time. once stuff happens. Okay, life happens, folks. Life happens. Bears happen. Bears get amorous. And they see Leo, and who doesn't love Leo? No. But the second time, there's no excuse for that, Mr. Bear. Um, so not yeah. that we're excusing rape at all. We're but not. now the director okay. has said definitively, no matter what you've heard, nope. Leo does not get raped by a bear. Does this mean that there is consensual bear sex? No, there is, <laughs> there is no bear sex of any kind. It's, yeah, there is no... All right. Consent was not an issue. In- <laughs> so, there you go. It's, well, now, I'm just, now I'm disappointed. I'm going to have to I'm give it a suck. Give, there, yeah. It's, no. Um, uh, no. It's, the Revenant. I'm trying to figure out what, this, what it's about. You, see, that's you can't the point tell of the question, though. Yeah. I can't tell you. And I have no idea. You know, I mean, the, you know, is it about cast members, you know that guy's directing. Him bringing his... you know his, there's zero bear rape. Maybe it's about like him reviving his career. Like he... No. I, uh, I don't is know. It's going to suck. Who's the other actor? Leonardo DiCaprio. And Tom Hardy. No, it's not going to suck. Yeah, probably it's not. It's not going to suck. Probably not. There's so many talented people in this. Yeah. They could sit around a coffee table and just talk about what they did last weekend, and I'd Man. still go watch that movie. Jim Drummush made that movie, and we did watch it. It was actually pretty good, right? <laughs> no. So it's not going to suck. Revenant's no. going to be good. Uh, in fact, we're going to be reviewing it on the show, uh, I believe, January 11th. Hopefully so it's about it a bear anti-hero superhero yeah. who does not rape people. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that bear gets consent. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Last, last bit of news for the, sh- the week. Adam McKay, director of Anchorman, okay. uh, says they are working on a third Anchorman movie where Ron Burgundy will have to deal with the internet. Based just on that, well, actually, let me get you first. What did you think of Anchorman 2? Um, it wasn't as good as Anchorman 1. It just wasn't. Could but have been. this is always, like, it's a sophomore slump, right? Like, the sequel, never as good. The, 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 the threequel, it's not like a given that it's going to suck. No. Um... I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. With it's gonna be good. I don't think yeah, it will not I think suck. it's gonna be good too. Adam McKay makes great stuff. Um, yeah, I, I, I did like the second one. I mean, not as much as the first one, but I did like it. It's a very funny movie. Still, I laughed my ass off in the theater. So yeah, I think that's gonna be awesome too. So, uh, all right. Well, that, that is show for this week. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Check out next week. Uh, next week, our hosts are gonna be Kyle Bowen. Kyle's coming back. Awesome. And he's actually gonna get to review the movies this time. Uh, and Jake Davis, we're going to be looking at In the Heart of the Sea, the Moby Dick movie, which, holy cow. The Moby Dick movie. I've, I've never been excited to see anything Moby Dick. No. I, I didn't even read it in school. I got an F. Uh, but this looks awesome. And also Legend, starring Tom Hardy. And Tom Hardy! He's both parts. Look at that. That's, wow. that's going to be fun. If you want to get in touch with the show, you can email us. Email is bigbms at zoho.com. 
And our Twitter handle is at big underscore BMS BMs. Thanks so much for watching. Folks, have a good night. Take care. All right, no joke, I did not turn my timer on. How'd we do? Nice. Messing with the background. Very good. Yeah. Uh, right on. Holy Man, I nailed that on the I thought I was going to be about five minutes short. I felt short. It felt quick. Yeah, it really did. So, all right, cool. But hey, you know. Good. Thank you.